Hey guys, it's Jess from Alden Dancing. Um, so this video again will be like chatty. I'm hoping to collaborate. Oh my cat's here already. <laughs> I'm hoping to have my friend who lives above me um, start filming me actually doing things, but that will be later once I'm done with school. I have one mon month left and then yeah, then it's just studying for certification. But anyway, that's not what this is about. Um, so I guess, I don't know. So <laughs> I finally have insurance through like that marketplace thing. And I mean, that's so far so good. Like I've gone into, I, you know, I went on a trip out of the country. I went to Dominican Republic for a few days, just a long weekend um, for my last spring break. And before I did that, I had to, um, I had to get some shots and, you know, malaria pills and all, all that jazz to leave the country. It was a real vacation because, yeah. Um, and in doing that, I had to show the new doctor, like, in the process of not having insurance since October, or no, yeah, October 1st, 2013, I, I guess my physician decided to move on from what she had been doing. I don't know where she went, but she is no longer at the clinic I was going to that was by my house, and now I live on a different side of town, so there's a whole bunch of things that I need to kind of work on. Uh, one would be getting a new primary care physici physician that I really trust and who trusts me because I know what I'm talking about. Um, I've been an amputee for almost 30 years now, three decades, and um, I've always been a good advocate towards doctors or prosthetists, um, maybe advocating for myself in public or social situations was not at all good until four or five years ago. But again, this of course will be a rambly video because I cannot keep my thoughts straight. <laughs> but yes, so what I was going to say about the visit is that, um, so I had insurance activated on March 1st. I made an appointment for March 1st to get shots and you know, get my leg checked out because it has been hurting for a while. And honestly, it's because um, since getting these prosthesis in and starting to actively wear them March 1st of 2013, um, I have just gained a lot of weight. Um, and it was because they wore differently. Um, I was feeling less active and just wanting to eat all the time. Um, so weight, especially for somebody who doesn't have all of her legs it is harder for me to lose weight but I'm finally getting that under control I think I am now down 14 pounds so pretty good I think my goal is like 20 or 25 and then kind of maintain a steady weight as much as I can between like um like zero to five pounds fluctuation you know on any given whatever because then my legs will be fine my body will be fine I won't be like combating things um so the sore that I had I mean it's really the same spot but it's always a different sore um so that was checked out at this appointment and um the doctor was like oh you know it doesn't look bad and I was like well here's what I normally do you can look at my chart it has all this information um you know we do this we do a 10 or even three weeks, 10 days to three weeks of, you know, an antibiotic. And then I do a probiotic and then, you know, I try to stay out of the prosthesis as much as I can, but I am very busy all the time. And I do try to make time where I am not wearing the prosthesis. Like when I was on my vacation, when we were just laying out, I was fine not wearing them um, and just resting as much as I could. But anyway, again, I digress. This is going to be really rambly. Um, so he wanted to do a swab of the spot and I was like, whatever, like do what you need to do guy. Um, <laughs> I was already not feeling him. Like we weren't vibing. Like I can tell if I'm going to like a doctor or not like pretty quickly. Um, the same with a prosthetist. Like I'll know if our personalities are going to mesh and if you're not going to listen to me when I know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to listen to anything you say <laughs> because I am that person. Um, so anyway, he did not prescribe me an antibiotic that day and was like, I'm going to wait until these swabs come back with the result and then we know how to proceed. And I was like, I don't think he actually said that. 
but that's what I was imagining him to say because I've been to the doctor for this issue many times. Um, and so I was like, whatever, like I just need to get the typhoid and the malaria pills, like send me on my way. I need to go to work because I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of dilly dallying um, when it comes to doctor's appointments and them thinking like they don't have time for you, but then they like drag out the appointment as long as possible at the same time. So whatevs. <laughs> Yeah, so the next day I get a call when I'm at work at like 9 in the morning and the nurse just says, hey, you tested pos positive. positive for MRSA or MRSA and I had a heart attack. Um, I know from reading other people's blogs or reading people's posts on the Amputee Coalition that MRSA is m a, typically a main reason that people get amputations in the first place and yeah so I heard this news six days before I was leaving the country and they were just like just pick up this antibiotic just take that and stay out of the sun I was like I I'm leaving the country to go to the Caribbean and I'm staying in the sun I didn't get sunburn I got a nice tan whatever um <laughs> so yeah, I, this is just going to be like an update and kind of a brief synopsis of how I dealt with being in a different country other than Canada. And I'm going to say next time I leave the country and go to the Caribbean, I would do it all inclusive because there was a lot of walking, which is fine. I'm able to walk all day. Um, obviously, I get tired and I get sore, whatever. I wasn't planning on walking the whole time, but, um, so in Dominican Republic, so one in the back of my mind, I'm like, I have MRSA. We cannot use the water. It is not potable. I mean, you can't even brush your teeth. I was showering in that water and I was really, 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 really nervous. Like anxiety times a million, um, nervous about showering in water that is probably just from the sewer system. Um, I'm not really sure. It smelled god-awful. And and I should say, the water in the sink smelled god-awful. The water in the shower was not as bad, but it was not good. Um, and we were in a nice little, like, apartment. It was a cute little thing that I saw on booking. I'm not sponsored. I don't know why I'm giving you specifics like this. But, you know, it was a reputable place to stay. It's just the water is bad. Like, the water is terrible. They don't have, you know, the same sort of water supply and water sanitation systems in place as we do, which is fine. Like, I just wanted to go lay at the beach, and that's what I was doing. Um, but yeah, so I had to take a shower, like, every day <laughs> that I was there. So four days, I had to take four showers that gave me severe anxiety, and I made sure um, I was using Cetaphil. And I made sure to put ointment on, I believe. I made sure my wound was always covered because I was like, if this gets worse, I don't know how quickly MRSA acts, but if it got worse, I was in another country. I mean, it's scary enough to go to the doctor in America for me and being told like, you know, if this doesn't heal, we're going to need to have surgery. You're going to need to be out of your prosthesis and yada 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 so yeah freaking out just about the showering situation um while I was there again I was only there a long weekend like a Wednesday to a Sunday at 3 a.m we left our flight left at 3 a.m that day um so yeah there was the water situation um and the apartment we were in was literally on the beach I'm gonna try to upload some photos to my blog which I haven't done in a long time and I'm sorry but life has gotten away from me recently um yeah so it was a really nice spot um I had a lot of fun when I wasn't freaking out about MRSA <laughs> because I mean MRSA um and if you don't know what it is like hopefully you never have to know what it is it's terrible um yeah still trying not to freak out about it I'm gonna my 
iPad is on some pillows to film this because I didn't want to be in my office. Um, yeah, so anyway, so the apartment was on the beach, literally. I took 20 steps and we were at our little cabana thing, which was cool because um, walking in sand is difficult for me. I mean, it's difficult for able-bodied people. It's, yeah, it's just difficult when you have to walk in prosthesis and sand. Um, but the sand there wasn't all that difficult. Like the super dry sand was difficult, but then I wasn't just walking up and down the beach. I mean, I maybe walked in, in the sand a total of 30 minutes the whole time I was there. I mean, yeah, it didn't really take all that much time. Um, so yeah, our apartment, as I have tried to start a few times now, um, okay, if I knew how to edit this out, I would, but I'm sorry, I don't. Um, so it was on a gravel road that they had clearly just poured cement over the gravel, um, so I had to be looking down the entire time I was taking steps. Um, and then their sidewalks were much taller than any I, I had really encountered here in America. Um, I'm guessing they were about 10 inches to a foot tall and they had no cutouts. So, I mean, it was just here's the road and then here's the sidewalk. And I would basically have to walk as fast as I could and like keep walking and not stop before I stepped onto the sidewalk and this was mm, your tail is in the way yes it is okay thank you no nope. yeah um so we had to go to the market a couple times and we did it the first night and I was like uh, <laughs> I don't know what's happening and we had to carry these groceries home um because I was about I mean, four or five small blocks, but every time it was a small block, you had to get down onto the road and then back up onto the, the sidewalk. So it was a real pain, and I got a real workout. Um, my legs weren't hurting too badly, but it's not something I wanted to continue to do. Um, so that was annoying. Thank you. Great. <laughs> so yeah, lots of walking around. Um, since we were kind of in an apartment, it wasn't like there was food right outside our door or room service. And that was fine. Like, I wasn't expecting that at all. But I was expecting maybe more cafes to be closer. So again, next time I go, I would definitely maybe do an all-inclusive. Not because I want it to be Americanized in a sense of being like that kind of familiar, but just for my own physical <laughs> well-being. Um, at one point, I would say, so we were there on Wednesday. I think Friday was when it had all become like too much. Like we had to walk everywhere and my legs were in pretty good shape. Like they weren't hurting. I mean, I had the sore and I had like MRSA just repeating in my head over and over and over and over and over and over again because anxiety is a real situation that I have dealt with for a while. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, by Friday, we were trying to go on an excursion. And I really, I really, really wanted to go snorkeling. And... <laughs> already crying about it because I couldn't make it work. I couldn't figure out how I was going to keep my prosthesis dry. Like, these prostheses cost a lot of money. <laughs> like, like more money than I make in a year. A lot of money. Um, and I don't make a lot of money, so I don't know why I'm using that as an example. But I'm pretty sure they're like $20,000 a leg and I have two of them and so one I don't know Spanish I know almost no Spanish I know zero Spanish and to advocate for myself when I don't know Spanish was 
non-existent. I couldn't, I could not advocate for myself at all. Um, I didn't know how to say amputee. I mean, I finally figured, I believe it's amputado. Um, I didn't know how to say prosthesis. I still don't. Or maybe we figured it out when we were sitting at the airport when we left, which isn't helpful. But so we went to a little like tourist pop up, like information center to kind of figure out excursions. And I guess excursions typically only happen Monday through Friday. And we were there Friday at like 2 p.m. So we kind of missed the boat on that. I mean, luckily for my anxiety, I guess. Um, there was like a whale watching tour, there was horseback riding, there was like, not dune buggies, but you know, cool things that I'm not going to be able to do now because I'm home um, and it's done. My trip is over and yeah, I know initially I had to put out um, a question onto the Amputee Coalition Facebook group saying, you know, how have other people done snorkeling? Is that the right one? Yeah, snorkeling, not scuba diving. I'm, no, I can't. Um, for other reasons, not because I don't have full legs. Um, and people were saying, you know, just bring a backpack, just put your leg in there. And I was like, that's all fine and well, but my legs, my prosthesis are full size legs. <laughs> like, I don't have a backpack or duffel bag to accommodate two full limbs. Like, it would look crazy. And it did, I'm sure. Um, no, it didn't because I, I didn't go scuba diving because there wasn't one around us that I could do. And I wasn't about to pay, um, also with these excursions, like you paid at this little tourist shop and then they came to like pick you up at your travel accommodations or whatever and I was like I don't want to pay for something when I can only do a third of it or I can only do three-fourths of it because there were so many cool things there were there was one that you got in like a catamaran and you did some snorkeling I keep thinking scuba diving and I know that is wrong I know that's not right um and so you'd go out and do that and then however it was like you were on this boat and then you were in this like natural pool like in the ocean with all these like sea creatures and it was way steep which is cool when you can stand up so it would be you know up to my chin because I'm sitting on the ocean floor I am not gonna be standing and I can't wear my prosthesis because I have cosmetic covers I've always had cosmetic covers I just prefer my legs to have cosmetic covers um, it's just kind of the era of prosthesis that I grew up in in the late 80s early 90s and now I mean it's very cool for people who want to like actively show like this is my prosthesis whatever that's cool I'm just not from that same whatever peer group I don't know what I'm talking about um, so yeah there were lots of excursions that sounded really amazing um, it just seemed to me that every single one of them had some aspect where you had to be in the water to get into a catamaran you walked into the water and then like walked up this ladder and I I wasn't comfortable doing that. It would be like, I would have to leave my legs at the apartment and I have, no, <laughs> like I can't, mm -mm. like that gives me so much anxiety because I consider my prosthesis just part of my body. I don't think of them as like, oh, these are prosthesis. They are my legs. I don't call them prosthesis to my friends or family. I call them my legs, which is really confusing because obviously I have residual legs and then I have prosthesis that I call legs and I know it's confusing. And so, yeah, I just couldn't make it work and I was stressing about it. And then we were going to rent a moped, which would have been super cool. And the guy was like, it's, you know, $25 and then it's 100 
dollars like deposit and then you get that back and we were like okay great we'll do that and then he was like but my my card reader is broken so you guys need to go find a bank and so we're like okay so we were walking and on this walk at this point it was like 80 degrees and I had sat previously I had sat down on a rock and just waited for my friend because she needed to get like sunscreen or something she went to get the change, all of our pesos, so we could ride the bus and go do all this other stuff and find the bank. Because so it was like a mile either to the left or to the right of our driveway. And so we had to figure that out. And so for 30 minutes, I was sitting, I don't know if it was 30 minutes, it was a really long time because one, again, I only know English and I went to a Spanish-speaking country. And as I'm sitting on the rock on the side of the road, all of these like taxi motorcycle people kept stopping and asking if I needed a ride somewhere but they were asking in Spanish and I knew what they were trying to ask me but I didn't know how to respond and I just kept saying lo siento and <laughs> I'm sure I pissed a lot of people off because I just don't know Spanish I decided French and German were way more useful <laughs> I'm yet to go to either of those countries Ugh. um yeah this video is gonna be like 50 minutes so if you watch all of it let me know. <laughs> it's more, this is just a diary, so I can kind of look back and be like, great, you're crazy. <laughs> so anyway, we had to walk, and we were waiting for the bus, and as I, was, as I was sitting there, the bus stopped, like, every five minutes, and then, as of course, as we needed to, like, get on one, there wasn't one, so we just walked, and I was like, whatever, this is fine. But... I just had this overwhelming sense of anxiety, like something was wrong besides my leg. I mean, I just felt constantly like something was wrong and that I was going to ruin my whole life because I was walking on my leg and it has MRSA. And of course, I didn't want to talk about it the whole time on my trip because I was with my friend. We were there just to like relax and, you know, get away from our life. Um, and it was really all that I could think about, <laughs> which sucks. It sucks when you're stuck on a subject and it just repeats in your head infinitely. <laughs> so yeah, we were walking down to this and then we made it our way to this little market and then there was like some sort of street brawl and I was like, I need to go. I need. We need to go back to the apartment. Like I'm freaking out right now. I don't feel safe. I'm in another country. Uh, like, and she was like, no, let's just walk down to this bank. It's right around the corner. We never found the bank, but um, there was a lot of crying on my part. <laughs> like, I mean, all in the span of this Friday afternoon, it was like, I was having the best time. We were laying on the beach and then we had lunch and then... I don't know. Anxiety is so weird. Um, and yeah. So yeah, we, I'm pretty, yeah, I was just kind of actively crying um, on the way back from this little markety place and everybody wants you to come and see their shop. And I was just like, I, I just need to leave. I just need to leave. I just need to leave. I need to go back to this apartment, I need to lay down, I need to like collect my thoughts and whatnot. And I was hoping we had a moped and we didn't, but luckily we were able to get back on the bus and we only rode it for like 30 seconds because, <laughs> I mean, a mile is not that long, so, um, yeah, so we did that and, but my anxiety is really bad, I just become silent and... <sighs> Yeah. And I know I was saying something like, my leg, there's something going on, like, I need to figure this out, I'm really sweaty, or something, I don't know, because I kind of, I had a stage 5,000 panic attack when we got back, and I looked at my leg, and I was like, ugh, this sucks, like, great, the sore has gotten worse because it's sweaty, and and we just all like did a mile of walking. Um, and my friend asked, you know, are there options to 
like amputate so it's not so there's there's so many angles and so many you know peaks and valleys and weird like pressure points and I was like yeah they would cut my leg off completely like it would be at the hip because right now I'm just below the knee or above the knee on the left side where this issue was happening and I was like I'm not doing that I'm not cutting another part of my body off like that's not happening and my friend was like well if it makes you feel better and you're not in pain wouldn't that be better and I was like no that no and so I was just kind of laying there and what sounded like a chainsaw or some so sort of saw started happening and I <laughs> I mean it was like PTSD to the max like I lost my mind I could not stop crying I couldn't even breathe I was shaking violently and screaming I was just screaming that the noise needed to stop I I couldn't control it. I could not control myself. And I think it might have just been like a motorcycle that somebody was revving. But in that moment, after talking about having to have my leg amputated further if I wanted, you know, whatever. And that's not an option for me. That's, I mean, that's a year of my life that I would lose forever. And it's not even guaranteed that my leg would feel better. There isn't a guarantee. So I'd rather just work with what I have. Um... And honestly, it's because of the weight. It's because my legs don't fit properly. Side note, making new legs this year um, after graduation. So mid-May, I'm going to start that process. Um, but it took me over an hour to re regain like normal breathing and not crying. And it was horrible. Like I don't even, there's no words and I don't. I mean, it needed to happen. I needed to process some stuff, but in a PTSD manner, like that scared me to death. Like, scared the absolute shit out of me. And I am sorry if you are a child or somebody who doesn't like swearing, uh, but I'm keeping this real. And it did scare me. It scared me to death. And it wasn't like, so when I was about to be two, this is when I had my legs amputated because of meningitis. Um, and it wasn't like I was awake when they were cutting off my limbs. So, but obviously a saw was used. <laughs> and hearing something like a chainsaw type noise triggered this freak out. And yeah. So, again, <laughs> the anxiety from thinking I had MRSA topped with, oh, you should just get your leg cut off further. And obviously my friend is saying it out of the kindness of her heart, saying, you know, I hate seeing you in pain. Would, wouldn't this make more sense? And I couldn't even articulate the points that I'm articulating now, now thinking about it three weeks later, like I couldn't even, I was just like, no, that's not happening. I'm not doing that. No. And then just having a, a thought of like, you have MRSA in the back of your mind. Yeah. I mean, I, it was just a perfect storm for this kind of freak out to happen. And it sucked that it took up like an afternoon when I was on vacation, but I mean, that was really the only time I had to really have these sort of emotions because otherwise I'm doing like 50 million things. Um, but yeah. But anyway, I had a message saying like you can pay your premium online for your insurance. Go check out your like my chart so you can see like <clears throat> your medical records and test results and whatnot. And so there was a message from March 1st saying, you know, you've, you've possibly tested. Possibly. No one said possibly to me on the phone. And if they did, I didn't hear it because I was freaking out. 
that you tested positive for MRSA. And then the next day, a day they did not call me, it said the final test results have come in and you are not MRSA, you have not tested positive for MRSA. And I read this on Friday of last week. So I don't know the protocol, but you would think if you called me the day before to say, hey, you have MRSA, go pick up your prescription, that the next day when the actual results came in, you would say, hey, no, you don't have MRSA. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like I need to talk to like client services or patient services or whatever because it is completely ridiculous that one but within a 24 hour period, they would use two different methods to contact me when I wasn't yet out of the country. So, yeah. I feel like a lot of anxiety could have been alleviated if they're like, oh, this is just a typical infection, like cellulitis. Like, you can fix this on your own with these antibiotics and blah, blah, blah. But no, that's not what happened. Instead, I left the country thinking I had MRSA. I came back into the country still thinking I had MRSA and like, what if it's worse now because my last antibiotic was on Friday morning, which also probably contributed my freak out. Like, oh, I don't have anything else. Like, this is it. Like, I'm probably gonna, whatever, perish because of this um, infection. So yeah, there's nothing quite like um, a threat to your body like a life-threatening infection, like MRSA, to really um, kick into high gear your health and fitness and like eating plan. Because now, I mean, I've been doing like meal prepping since December 27th of last year. So like just three months, basically, three months, four months, three months, three months. I've noticed results. Like I'm not really eating carbs. I mean, I'm still eating carbs, but I'm trying not to eat them every single day at every single meal. And if I eat carbs a lot one day, then I'm like, okay, I'll just kind of avoid those for a few days and just focus on veggies and fruits. And so, yeah, I mean, this is something I started with my friend and even though we're not doing it really together anymore, um, the threat of having or the, the idea of having more of my body cut off and thrown away is the best motivation ever to uh, maintain a healthy weight um, and learn how to care for my body in that sense, nutritionally. Um, so yeah, I have like another 10 pounds or so. Um, I don't really remember, but... Twelve, twelve pounds to go um, before I'm at a good weight, and then once that's maintained, that's when we're kind of going to be casting for new legs and starting that whole process. So probably early, probably winter. I'm not really sure how long it'll take this time. Last time it was a learning process for my prosthetist, and this time I'm hoping we can kind of like, okay, this worked and this didn't work, or what did you like about this, or what would you change for this aspect? So should be interesting. I'm hoping I can film the process maybe and I don't know, put it up online. I have to talk to my prosthetist about that because obviously it's her work and whatnot. And it's she not like our the company that was is now bought up by Hanger. But yeah, this video is 33 minutes. I still don't know how to edit things, so you would just get to have all of it. Do with it what you will. And I have the hiccups. Also, don't ever eat a salad at Cheesecake Factory because clearly it's just poison and I'm dying from that. <laughs> so, on that, I'm going to go take a bath and relax and try not to think about stage 5 panic attacks and actually knowing that I never had MRSA and trying to think of a way of how I need to go about alerting my healthcare provider like that is unacceptable um, because it is like why would you say that and the thing is is that when the nurse called and said it to me she was just very nonchalant and I was like <laughs> this 
no, you should have me come back in. You should look and, like, take another swab. Take something from my body. I don't know. Take some blood for me and make sure this is really what it is. Because I am not about to have another freaking fatal infection. But anyway, um, I'm hoping to film a new or, like, an updated Here's My House after living here for, like, nine months. Um, yeah. But I have one more month of grad school, so probably not going to be a lot of content. But thank you for watching, and if you made it through all 35 minutes of this video, uh, write that below or something. I don't know. I'm impressed. Um, okay, bye.